The core point of it is to have a small, relatively expendable boat. Um, what happens is there's a wireless link between just a normal WASP system, um, which is able to go into an area where you're not absolutely certain there's underkill clearance, and especially for a really big boat. Um, and so that boat needs to have a WASP system on it in this case, because you want to be able to go over the area and go, all right, there's underkill clearance here, there's a few bits of coral here, some rocks have been in this area, They're not, none of them are on the chart, but I can see, I'm really sure I can get my big boat in here without trouble. Ideally, the big boat might be on its way in right now or it's about to come in. So you want to do a few passes, make sure there's a nice wide area where you're confident you've got under-clear clearance. And then as fast as possible, you want the skipper of that boat to get the information that he is or isn't going to go onto that harbour. Here we are with our super yacht at Administration Bay, Motutapu Island, which is in Auckland, New Zealand. It looks like a beautiful anchorage and we've decided we want to anchor our super yacht for lunch. The chart says there's 7.3 metres of water in the bay, which looks very good. However, to be sure that it's safe for our yacht, crew and guests, we've sent out our tender equipped with a WASP W3 with CDX to map the bay ourselves instantly and in real time to make sure our chosen anchorage is a safe one. In the bottom picture, we can see the tender is starting to map the bay in 3D and 2D in the top picture. In this scenario, we also have a WASP W3 on our super yacht. So while we stand by on the super yacht safely outside the bay, the tender maps the full bay to see where it's safe for us to anchor for lunch. And we're also mapping outside the bay while we wait. Uh, the W3 um, was initially deployed uh, on some Navy vessels and then it spread out into other um, semi-survey for super yachts um, and also for um, cruise ships as well. That became a market also for portable uh, deployments where you could quickly put a, a multi-beam system onto small craft to go out and map areas which could be um, after environmental uh, catastrophes or could be uh, mapping in areas where other other work which weren't well mapped and needed to be better understood uh, by the skippers of the larger vessels. Our super yacht draws three meters, and if we look at our depth cursor, we can see we've found some areas that are less than three meters deep. And if we look over here, we can see it's shallowing out at 3.8 meters, with deeper spots around seven to nine meters, which is what the chart told us. So clearly there are some shallower spots we need to avoid in this area. The good news is, while we stand by, we're fed this information instantly and in real time from the tender to the super yacht's bridge. And we can start to see our map of the seafloor building up, which means we get an accurate image of what the seafloor of the bay is really like. Uh, navigational, the difference can be huge. Navigational charts um, around the world are based off of data that is typically, in I would say 90% of locations, uh, collected with single beam, which means you've got point targets on the seafloor. And those, uh, those surveys may have taken place many years ago, um, things may have changed, um, and also they, they can be incorrect, inaccurate as well. There's also a lot of a lot of charting, especially in the islands and so on, which have actually been collected with data off of lead line. Uh, so it's actually been string line, um, spot point target, uh, sorry, point depths. So the accuracy is very, very low. In other areas, you know, in coastline areas in Europe and so on, um, the accuracy is relatively high. However, it only really gives you a contour image of, of the seafloor and what is going on. Whereas with real-time bathymetry, it is truly real time. You're seeing exactly what is down there um, right now. So, it, you know, it's not about historic data, it's about real time data. And you're also seeing d detail, which is typically 100 times higher than what the original survey would have been. When I say 100 times, it just depends on the original survey, it could be more. From these contour lines, we can see much of the bay is nine meters deep. 
But there's a very significant rock here, with red showing shallow water and grey showing extremely shallow water. This would be a serious danger to our valuable superyacht if we anchored on top of that. Back on our superyacht, we have a comfortable 10 metres of water under our boat, and we can see a few seafloor undulations and rocks. Our WASP W3 gives us significantly more detail than that shown on the chart.